What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about taking your car to a dealership or stealership. Um, first off, I'll go ahead and start by saying if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Like, thumbs up, whatever you want to do. Um, next thing is, I'm going to go ahead and start by saying I'm a technician myself. I worked in dealerships and shops. Um, so don't take this for any misinterpretation I'm kind of giving people trying to give you as a consumer or a customer a, a little bit of an insight um, to the automotive world and dealerships um, people like to call them stealerships uh, first off I'll start by saying getting your vehicle diagnosed if you have a concern or problem um, anybody can take their car to an auto zone wherever you know how somebody pull a check engine light code say you've got a bad sensor when you bring your vehicle to a dealership you know you're not necessarily we're not just going in and the technician is not just gonna go and say okay well you've got a check engine light on and you know they're not gonna just say okay well it's showing you've got a bad sensor or a code for a sensor um, you know there's more that goes into it you know some technicians there's really good technicians out there that can tell you right off the bat and say okay well I've seen this a thousand times before I know what to do I know what to look for you know they can quickly diagnose something and that that's my point of that is you know you're not getting your vehicle just a check engine light you're not just getting some type of random code that some other shop or some other Joe out there is just going to give you a code. Okay, well, again, like I said, you take it to AutoZone or some other place that's going to just check the light for you and maybe clear the code. Maybe it goes off. Maybe it comes back. Um, you know, they're just going to give you the code or general idea. When you take it to a dealership and bring it in and say, okay, well, my check engine light is on or my vehicle's running rough or I'm having a problem, the technician is obligated to look into the concern and diag properly diagnose the vehicle, um, which can also take me to my next point here. When you bring your vehicle into a dealership, people don't understand that the rates of a dealership or shop rates, labor rates, diagnosing fees, the diagnosis fee may be different from the labor rate. Um, so I've seen labor rates, really high labor rates, and I've seen some that were fair. But most of the times nowadays, if you're not under some type of warranty and you bring your vehicle in for some type of diagnosis, then the labor rates could be through the roof. Um, you know, I've seen some, some shops, I know the shop that I work at, I believe it's almost $150. Um, just for a diagnosis fee. Now, that's not the labor rate. That is a diagnosis fee. Now, the labor rate, I believe, may in my shop will obviously be different from, you know, your local shop or your local dealership or whatever. Um, it varies from shop to shop. Just depends on where you're at. If you're state to state, no matter where you are, um, it just depends. You know, there's different shops and dealerships that run things differently. Um, the next point I could say is technicians in your dealership or shop, are they qualified? Are they certified? And do they know what they're doing? Nine times out of 10, if you go into a dealership and you have a concern, a problem, and a technician is working on your vehicle and say you don't feel confident or comfortable with a certain technician if they're taking you know a crap ton of time or whatever the case is, or you don't feel that you're getting properly serviced. Your vehicle is not getting, you feel that your vehicle is not getting properly serviced. You can always ask, nine times out of ten, you can always ask uh, management or your local service advisor um, or whoever you're dealing with to see the technician's credentials or certifications, qualifications, whatever the case is. Um, the management will usually tell you, hey, our technicians are qualified, they're factory trained, or they have all their ASC certifications, whatever the case is. Um, most dealerships now are required, most people now are required in dealerships to have some type of certifications, ASC, 
factory trained technicians. Uh, I myself, I'm a certified Chrysler technician um, and have been for two years. Um, they have their own way of doing things in each manufacturer. I'm not going to get into that. Um, but again, you can always ask for certifications or ask management, hey, you know, maybe I don't feel comfortable working with this technician. Can I request a different technician? There's different ways about it you can go. Um, next point is your wait times. This varies across the board. I'm not going to hit on this too much. Um, there could be different things. You know, maybe your vehicle is not going to be the same as someone else's. Um, their wait times can differ if you're sitting there waiting at the dealership. Say you're getting your oil changed and your tires rotated. Sometimes it can take up to an hour. You may have a bigger job, say you want to wait on a, some type of diagnosis. We get customers coming to my shop and dealership that I work at all the time that customers want to wait either for some type of recall get done or some type of smaller work if they have to, if they're required to leave it and it takes a lot of time for diagnosis or whatever the case is, you know, you have to be patient. As a customer or consumer, you're going to have to be patient with the technician because they're trying... You know, they're not just working on your vehicle alone. They have a hundred other vehicles coming through the shop in one day and they're trying to, you know, get so much done. You know, you're not the only customer. Um, OEM parts. That's this is my next point. When you go into the dealership, nine times out of ten, the technician will rather use OEM parts. Now, it may vary from shop to shop or dealership, whatever the case is. Um, when repairs are made, if your vehicle is not under warranty, or if it even is, if your vehicle is under some type of warranty, they're required to use the OEM parts. The fact the part that came off has to go back on, and that doesn't mean that you know the broken part goes back on. That means the same part has to go back on. You can't go and get the part from O'Reilly's or Vance or AutoZone or some other part store and just slap on. It has to be from the manufacturer part. Um, so and that's some people's concern there um if you request aftermarket parts and say you can't afford the oem parts if the parts five hundred dollars and the aftermarket's four hundred dollars if it saves you money you know whatever the case is but most of the time a certified dealership technician will rather use oem parts in most cases um there's other cases out there which like again i'm not going to get into that on this video um, the next point I'm going to say is warranties. If your vehicle is still under some type of factory warranty, 336, if it's or if it's a 100,000 mile, whatever the case is, if it's a repair that's covered under your warranty, great. You would rather take it to a dealership instead of trying to take it to some other shop and have somebody else screw it up um, or if something happens. Um, there's so many different variables that go into warranties. Um I don't work on that side of things. Um, I do warranty jobs, but I'm not a warranty clerk or administrator. Um, so there's so much other stuff that goes into that. You know, I don't want to explain in this video as well. But if your vehicle is under warranty, it's highly, highly recommended that you take it to the dealership. Um, being as, for one, you're getting a free repair, possible free repair. If it's not covered under warranty, well, you know, they'll let you know before they proceed any further. Um... The next two things are kind of the same that I'm going to talk about. Um, what happens when you, your service advisor or technician is trying to sell you things that you don't need in the first point I'm going to talk about. Um, and there are some things out there that you may say, well, I don't need this right now, or I think I don't need this. Majority of the time nowadays, I'm not going to speak for the hack or you know crappy technicians or mechanics out there. I'm just speaking on the points of what kind of things is are they trying to sell you at the dealership there's going to be things that you think that oh i don't need this or i don't need that done there's a reason why they're trying to tell you this stuff if you don't maintain your maintenance on your vehicle they can void your powertrain warranty so if you have some type of warranty on your vehicle whether it be powertrain warranty or your basic warranty then they can actually void that warranty if you're not maintaining your maintenance. So that's one of the main things, you know, if your tires say your tires are good or if they're trying to sell you tires or if they're trying to sell you brakes and you know for a fact that your tires are good or your brakes are good, um, 
and say, okay, well, I know I just checked my tires recently. You know, I don't, I know for a fact I don't need tires. Um, and that's one case of it. But again, there's so many different variables that can go into that. But pay attention to what your service advisor is telling you. Um, there are some service advisors out there that try to play dirty um, or some type of clerk out there that might play dirty. Um, but again, like I said, I can't speak for everyone out there. Um, next point is, again, that can coincides with the first one there, selling you things that you do need. Um, you know, if you watch one of my previous videos, I'll probably leave a link in the description below about maintaining and why it's important to change your vehicle's fluids. Um, over time, you're, you need to keep up with your maintenance again um, because you've got to maintain those fluids. You've got to maintain your vehicle. Make sure you're rotating your tires up to make sure you're rotating and balancing your tires. Um, every so often, get your alignment done. Say you have alignment done once a year or twice a year. You want to keep up with those services because, you know, if it's alignment, you want to make sure your tires are wearing evenly, you know, your brakes are wearing evenly. You want to make sure everything is okay. If you have any questions of what the technician or your service advisor or service clerk is trying to sell you, you can always verify and say, okay, well, my technician says I need brakes or my technician says I need tires. You can always ask your service clerk or service advisor and say, can you escort me to my vehicle out or is there a way we can I want to be able to see it for myself in most cases they'll be more than happy to in some cases you know you might have a stickler or a stick in the mud if they want to be a stick in the mud about it you can take your business elsewhere if you know you know time or shop permitting um, but again like I said if you have any further questions usually a service advisor usually doesn't mind you know that you say okay well I want to verify this before I pay you know two to five hundred dollars for this repair can I see it for myself most of the time they'll allow you to do that um, nine times out of ten they will um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is quality customer care and service and a lot it, you as a consumer or customer we all want quality customer care or service and we all want good care we all want good service no matter where we go where it's to be at a restaurant getting our vehicle serviced going to any type of place of business we all want good service um, now what may be good for one person may not be good for the other um, and everybody's gonna have different experiences and different things that go into effect there um, but the quality customer care can vary differently um, but if you feel that you're mistreated, they're going to tell you, hey, look, they're going to try to make it up to you um, in any possible way. And if you still don't feel comfortable or right with the situation, you can always step away from the situation. Now, does this mean there's always going to be those angry customers? But what I mean by this, in a sense, is... You know, you, you have the option to take your business elsewhere. So I'm not trying to harp on one person or somebody else. Um, but you as a customer, consumer, have that option. Um, and the last thing I'm going to talk about in this is not all dealerships or shops or car businesses are created the same or equally. There's so many different variables in the situation that you may have a dealership that's a large corporation or you may have a smaller mom and pop dealership or a family owned business or a dealership. Um, so they're not all created equally. Some will do things better for you than others. Um, so if you have, you know, some Mercedes or BMW, sometimes they give you a customer loaner or whatever the case is, you know, they're not all gonna be the same. You know, some are gonna cater to you as a better customer or say you have a great standing with a dealership or shop, say you buy a lot of vehicles from there, and say you get a lot of VIP treatment. Again, like I said, they're not all created equally. So a lot of people think that it's supposed to cater to every single thing. It's, you know, it's not, it's not gonna happen perfectly. Um, you know, a lot of people, again, like I said, think of it as a dealership. Think of it as a dealership. Um, 
again, like I said, you might be paying more for a better service, but again, you have to understand the situations of they have to pay the technicians. The technicians really don't make a whole lot of money. Again, like I said, I'm a technician myself. You don't make a whole lot of money as a technician or mechanic. And whereas the dealership's making all the money, you know, the technician's not. So you really have to understand the technician's point of view. Um, and in some a lot of cases, that's hard for people to understand. Um, I believe that's all I got for this video, guys. Again, like, subscribe, share, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment if you need to. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for everybody keeping up with me. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Keep on wrenching, guys.